Hi, everybody. Uh, so we are going to talk about uh, interpretability uh, of uh, models and uh, specifically for uh, computer vision models. The, um, okay, so I'm Pierre. I'm the co-founder and uh, CTO of uh, Sikara. And at Sikara, our main business is to, is to build applications um, using uh, computer vision models uh, for very varied uh, clients. And one of the issues uh, in this is to be able, when we have a model, uh, to understand how the decisions are made inside the model and uh, what it's based on, uh, especially if you w we want to find slight uh, flows in the, in the model. So, uh, credit where it's, where it's due, the library has been uh, mostly developed by uh, Raphael, uh, who is the lead data scientist at uh, Sikara, but uh, sadly couldn't be here today. Um, it's called TF Explain because uh, the TF uh, means that it's uh, mainly intended to be used uh, with uh, TensorFlow, uh, which is the, um, the deep learning library by uh, Google. Okay, so uh, back to uh, interpretability. Uh, what does it mean? Well, if we have a very basic uh, data and uh, models behind it, uh, it's usually not that hard to understand what the model does. Uh, here, this is a very classic uh, iris uh, data set uh, where we have only a few different uh, variables. Uh, and we can, uh, okay, th this is uh, from uh, the library uh, sharp documentation if we want to check that. Uh, here, the sizes of the, um, the different parts indicates the relative uh, importance of each of the features um, in the decision. So, uh, this works when we have a, a simple data model and when we have simple uh, machine learning models behind it. But when we're doing uh, deep learning on images, it sh it's much harder. Um, usually the models are gonna have tens uh, or maybe hundreds for some uh, of layers, um, millions of parameters, and it's much harder just looking at the parameters uh, to understand how the model thinks in a way. Um, so one way to look at it when we are talking about images, uh, which is my main concern here, is to build uh, saliency maps. So saliency maps are uh, maps on the images uh, which highlight the, the zones of the images uh, that are most imp impactful in the decision of the model. So here uh, we are trying to... Um, to, uh, um, to see a, a, an animal, and we can see that the model uh, looks mostly at the, the animal because the, these are the, the yellow parts. So here I have a science maps where the yellow means these are the most useful pixels, and the purple ones are much less uh, useful. So, a uh, very brief parenthesis on uh, TensorFlow 2. Uh, so, TensorFlow was um, open sourced by Google in 2015. And two months ago, they, um, they released uh, the stable version of TensorFlow 2, which uh, has a few changes. Uh, now we have uh, three different APIs. Uh, the first one, sequential API, is for model that we can think of linearly uh, because each layer uh, uses uh, only the outputs of the previous layer. Uh, functional API might be useful for uh, residual networks, for instance, when you, you have well-defined layers, but you might want to use the, the outputs of a previous layer uh, for layer that is further down. And the uh, subclassing API uh, is for more uh, subtle modifications, like if you want to define your own custom layer, for instance. Um, one uh, key element for our concern here is uh, the, um, this object, which is called gradient tape, uh, which, has the, the, um, which is quite useful because it's going to um, register everything that happens, and also uh, including the gradients. Uh, which are uh, which are going to be useful in some of the interpretability methods uh, we're going to use. So I close uh, the parenthesis. The loss is defined here, and then we can retrieve the gradients using this object uh, gradient type, uh, which has been introduced in uh, TensorFlow 2.0. Uh, so that, that's one of the reasons uh, for building it uh, TF explain only in TensorFlow 2.0 because it's much easier to uh, make some uh, calculus with it. 
Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to dive into a few uh, interpretability uh, methods here, and uh, starting with one of the most uh, intuitive one, uh, namely uh, occlusion sensitivity. So the, uh, the heuristic behind this is that uh, if we want to know which pixels are the most important in the decision of the network, and what we're going to do is simply uh, generate images where we hide part of the image, and we want to see uh, if this had if this has a, a big impact or not uh, in uh, well, um, in what uh, in the decision of the um, of the model. So if the confidence drops uh, highly, it means that the um, the, the pixels behind the patch uh, must have been uh, quite important. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, mainly what you do is you build uh, the, the patched images. So you have to generate uh, quite a few images by uh, moving the, the patch on the different parts of the image. Uh, then uh, we make the, the predi predictions uh, of the network uh, on all of these uh, images. And uh, we wrap that up uh, by creating a map where the, for each pixel, um, we use the um, the images where the patch uh, covers the the pixel to generate uh, a heat map. Um, this is uh, quite uh, easy to understand that as a concept and uh, to implement. But one of the drawbacks is that um, it can take uh, a bit of time to uh, to to run and uh, a bit of resources because you have to generate quite a few images and then render inference in all of those images. And um, another thing that might impact it is the size of the patch. Uh, because um, if, we, you want to, if you have very fine-grained elements in the image that might be useful, it means you're going to need to have a very small patch. Uh, but you might want to keep big patches for um, bigger elements in the image uh, that might have an impact. Uh, so. Now we look at uh, a few more uh, ideas for uh, interpretability models. And one of the main concepts uh, in deep learning is uh, gradients. So how could the gradients uh, help us? Well, intuitively, uh, we're, we're going to try to, to look where the gradients uh, could show the, the importance of some uh, the, um, the place that, that are calculated at. The, the most basic idea is to look at the gradients um, uh, on the, the loss function, but for the input uh, image. So uh, the, the heuristic here is that if the gradient is high, it means uh, the position in the image uh, has a high impact, because if you modify it a little bit, it has a high impact on uh, what, ha what, happened, what happens sorry, um, afterwards. So. How do we do that? Uh, well, we'll, uh, we load the data, OK? Uh, we just define the output as being the, the one hot vector, uh, which is, OK, zero everywhere except for the class uh, we, we want to look at. Uh, and then we just uh, compute the gradients uh, using this uh, gradient type object uh, I was talking about. And uh, this is pretty much. Uh, but this method uh, has some issues. Um, here, I have the same image uh, of the cat. And I'm trying to, uh, to have interpretability intuition when I look at the, um, what the, the model does for predicting a cat or for predicting uh, a kite. And we can see that it's on the kite class. Um, the image is quite similar to what we can see on the on the cat class, uh, but it shouldn't be because there is no reason why the shape of a cat or the specific element of a cat should help define uh, if I have a, a kite or, or not. And so, uh, how can we uh, have sanity checks uh, on uh, our saliency maps? Well, there are a few ideas that might help. Um, the first one. And uh, the second one is quite, quite similar: is to try to modify some uh, some elements and see if it has an impact on the salient maps. For instance, if I add some uh, random noise in the um, model parameters, the intuition is that it should have an impact on the salient map uh, because if I 
if I change my model into uh, a model that does not make sense, it should not be able to, uh, to recognize the same things. However, as you can see, uh, some methods does not change much. So I have different uh, columns with uh, randomized parameters, uh, different uh, random, um, random parameters and random noise added, but the same C maps are very similar. Uh, what this indi indicates intuitively is that um, the saliency maps shows uh, elements that come much more from the inputs than from how the model uh, analyzes the inputs. Another way to look at it is to randomize not the parameters, but the labels uh, on the, of the image. So we randomize the, the data, and we, we had some, uh, some random labels that do not make sense. So here, this is like, if I want to, to see a, a zero on the, the missed data sets. And again, the intuition is that if in my training data I add some noise on the labels, it should show on, um, in the saliency map on what the model does, because the, the saliency map should be much degraded. But we can see that uh, some models, again, have uh, a saliency map that is not that much degraded, which again indicates that it relies too much on uh, simply the input image and not what the model does with it. So um, a, more, a bit more advanced uh, approach that's, um, that is a bit, a bit more robust uh, to this and uh, quite fast to calculate is what we call uh, GRADCAM. So I'll, I'll give you um, an intuition quickly. Uh, the idea is here, if, you come if we come back to a convolutional neural network, um, to use the last uh, conv convolutional layer of the network as uh, the features of the, um, the dense layers uh, afterwards. So we don't look at uh, what happens when uh, we modify the inputs, but uh, what happens around the, the last layer of the, of the network. So here, uh, for, for instance, this is a VGG16 um, network, so the last layer uh, should be uh, 512 um, times uh, 14 times 14 uh, dimension. And, uh, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, so I have 512 uh, filters that each look at different parts uh, of the image. And I want to uh, exploit this uh, to build um, a useful silence map. And the idea behind GRADCAM is that we're going to use the gradient of uh, this, uh, the, the output of the last convolutional layer uh, relatively to the, uh, to the loss as um, weights on how much each filter uh, is important in the decision. So the intuition here is that if the gradients, sorry, if the gradients uh, of the given filter are, are really high, it means it's used much more uh, for the decision. So I want to uh, show that in the saliency map. So basically, uh, this is a bit brutal. Um, we have uh, we average all of the, the gradients um, for each uh, filter's gradients. And we use that to, make, to have a ponderation on, uh, I'm sorry, uh, on the, the filters, them, filters themselves, and then we get the saliency map. So uh, how does it work in the, in the code? Well, the, the first step, slightly um, more involved, is to uh, retrieve the, uh, the output layer and the gradients uh, we, want to, uh, we want to use. Uh, which is the the output of the last convolutional layer. Uh, then again, uh, as previously, we uh, we get the, the gradients, and then uh, after computing them, we simply average um, average the the gradients for each filter, and then use this to calculate the saliency map. How does it behave? Uh, as we can see on this uh, example. Uh, it's more, uh, there is a, a, a much bigger difference between uh, the saliency map for the cat class and the saliency map for the kite class, which means, uh, again, intuitively, that uh, it's more robust uh, regarding the classes because the kite class um, does not use elements that are specific to, uh, to cats, which it shouldn't. 
Uh, okay, so that, that's for uh, the intuition on a few uh, a few methods. Uh, now uh, I'm going to go to the, the library. <laughs> um, the idea behind this was to give the ability to a uh, data scientist working on the model to get these uh, interpretability uh, features wi without, without having a lot of hassle to integrate them inside the model. So uh, the idea is really to uh, integrate in a, a standard flow of, uh, of training of a, a deep learning model for vision. S uh, the first idea is to, uh, to be able to look at uh, the saliency maps during the, tra the training phase. Uh, so here uh, it uh, has been integrated into a tensor board. And uh, we can see inside TensorBoard the results uh, and the saliency maps for various um, various uh, interpretability methods on uh, part of the validation data during the training. So we can see during the training uh, how the model evolves. Uh, there are a few uh, methods imp implemented. Uh, there is a, a seventh uh, on top of that now, uh, which is the, also the guided GradCams. Uh, the intuition uh, on this is that it's the same as GradCam, except that uh, it try not to take into account uh, negative uh, imp uh, gradients that have a negative impact uh, so in order to focus on um, the elements that have uh, an impact specific on the class. And uh, the, the results are slightly more, more interesting. Uh, as, as you can see, uh, the saliency maps are quite uh, different, so it, uh, it's quite useful to look at different methods because um, it's not as if you want to, to look at the accuracy of model. There is not like a predefined metric that you can calculate everywhere. Um, it's quite uh, subjective uh, how the, the, the saliency map uh, are, are useful. Um, and actually, uh, even the authors of papers working on this uh, haven't found a, a specific method. Uh, for instance, in the GradCamp paper, what they do is they uh, they ask to uh, around 50 people on uh, using Mechanical Turk what they thought of the saliency map uh, to be able to judge if it was better or not than uh, other methods. Uh, so it's useful to have different met method to look at. Uh, in order not to be uh, oriented in, a, in the wrong di direction. Mm. Uh, how does it work if, if you want to use it? Uh, well, it's, there are two, two ways to look at it. One is to uh, take a model that has been previously trained, uh, and you want to uh, understand how the model behaves. So here, um, OK, so you, you, you load the, the model and the, the data you, you want to look at, the data you want to look at the, the same maps. Uh, then you simply have to, ext uh, to instantiate uh, the explainer you have selected. Here, this is the GradCam explainer. And then uh, we have a standardized method. Um, so the, uh, the explain uh, method that is, that is used for all of our interpretability methods with the same parameters and potentially some um, um, specific parameters. Uh, for instance, here, since it's GradCam, we need to define which uh, layer we is the last convolutional layer. Um, so block 5.3 is the example for the VGG16 uh, model, for instance. Uh, and then uh, this is it. The other way to look at it, uh, as you saw in the, the TensorF TensorBoard uh, example, is to uh, look at what happens during the training. So then uh, here what we do is that um, First, we want to define uh, which uh, images uh, we are going to be uh, looking at. So uh, we define the, the validation data sets we want to generate the um, sensing maps for. Uh, and then uh, we have a, a callback me method that we can create, and you just need to uh, call it uh, during your on in the, um, the training phase, so in the fit methods. And, uh, that's it. And what happens is that uh, during the training, the, the saliency maps are going to be generated uh, in a format uh, usable by uh, TensorBoard. And then you can retrieve them in, the, in TensorBoard, as I showed you uh, slightly uh, before. Uh, that's it. If you want to install it, uh, there is a Python uh, package. So it's uh, pip install tfexplain, and that's all. And uh, have fun. This is um, 
licensed uh, MIT, so you can uh, use it uh, pretty much however you want. And don't hesitate to give us uh, feedbacks on it. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre Henry. So uh, I suppose this is a new field of development, uh, explaining the models, and uh, this is key. So uh, uh, do you know of, m of many other projects that work on uh, this? There are a few projects. Uh, ours is very specific because it was our need to uh, TensorFlow and uh, images. Mm -hmm. uh, we intend to look at uh, NLP uh, still in TensorFlow uh, next year. But there are maybe uh, more known projects such as uh, Sharp that some of you might have heard of. Uh, that are more more generic, uh, I would say. Uh, but we didn't find many projects that were both um, maintained and uh, including the, the specific methods for images uh, we were looking at uh, in TensorFlow. Okay. So we kind of had to, to well, build it It's one of the rare <laughs> projects that we need uh, to explain AI because a lot of people are concerned. Uh, and so thank you for all of us because this is key. <laughs>